So we have covered in depth how important it is to find good insulation to keep you warm in an emergency survival situation. But how could you turn insulation like this into some sort of clothing or portable blanket? Well, here's how we do it. First, we need something to bind our materials together. These cedar roots are strong enough and flexible enough to do the job. Splitting the root will make it more flexible and easier to work with. To make a blanket, we're bundling piles of sword fern together using the cedar roots to tie them. We're just twisting and wrapping the roots around the fern bundles using the same method that we would use to make cordage. We don't need any knots here, just three or four twists and wraps will do the job. When we come to the end of our length, we'll just tie on the next length of root and continue wrapping and twisting the roots around the fern bundles until we have the right length for our blanket. You don't want the blanket to be too heavy, but you need it to be long enough that you can curl up under it without any of your body being exposed to the cold. For this blanket, we made two separate runs of binding and then tied them together at the end to make a handle. Overall, this was a pretty quick and easy process, and once the bundles were bound together tight, our blanket was strong and durable without any threat of coming apart. We'll trim up the edges a bit just to make everything nice and tidy, and the handle makes it possible for us to hang our blanket up so we don't have to leave it on the ground while it's not in use. You may want to go back and watch a couple of our shelter videos if you're wondering why sword fern is such a great choice for insulation. Because I can already feel like I'm getting too warm. I told you it would work. Having a portable blanket allows us to quickly move our insulation to anywhere we need it around camp. It's also light enough to be carried over short distances if we decided to relocate our camp, which prevents us from having to harvest new insulation materials. But how would you make something that you could actually wear around and walk in like a coat or vest? Well, we're going to apply the same process that we use for making a blanket to making our coat, but with a few variations. In this case, we're bundling dry chunks of moss together using the same method of wrapping and twisting until we have several nice long lengths of bundled and bound dried moss. In the case of this coat, we made six total lengths of moss. Once we have these long strips of moss laid out, we can start binding them to each other horizontally so that everything is connected. The moss binds together very well without falling apart, and this blanket slash coat is less fragile than you might think. It's not something you would want to wear while hiking through thick brush or anything, but that's not really its purpose anyway. This is for wearing around camp, hiking through open areas, or pulling into your shelter to use as a blanket during the night. We left a few openings at the top to fit our head and arms through, but you could just drape it over your shoulders while you're sitting or standing, which really does just feel like you're wearing a blanket over you. It occurred to us after the fact that you could also wear this as a ghillie suit to camouflage you from your prey in a hunting situation. I gotta admit, I really enjoyed walking around in this thing. It didn't take long before I felt my body temperature go up, and I couldn't help but pretend that I had suddenly transformed into the character Moss Man from the Masters of the Universe comics. You know, I feel like Moss Man never really got the recognition that he deserved for his ability to camouflage himself and control all plant life. And yeah, maybe he wasn't one of the more exciting He-Man characters, but I guarantee you this. Moss Man, being literally made of moss, had the ability to stay insulated and warm, on a cold night in the wild, an attribute that we aspire to as well. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.